Are you having trouble picking the right hero for your draft? Do you keep wondering why the hero you drafted seemed good at first but was lackluster in the actual game? Don't worry, because we at Action are here to help you. This is our draft tier list. Before we get started, we would like to thank Swaggy G and Void Gimmick for helping our very own Aviera make the tier list. It's hard to get a decent sample size from a single person since one can only draft so many different heroes. First, let's break down the rankings. S is for heroes which are auto picks as soon as you see them, and generally are good on their own. Being able to pick two of them is amazing, and in some cases having two of the same might push your deck over the top. D tier is for heroes that are really good but require some color synergies. Unlike S tier heroes, they require you to have decent main deck cards to unlock their full potential. B tier is for heroes that are good in general, but some parts of their kit may be lackluster. They could either have low stats, a weak passive, or a bad signature card. C tier is for heroes that you might be forced to pick if you need a hero of a certain color. This might be due to you drafting cards of a color that you don't already have a hero for. Lastly, we have F tier. This tier is for heroes that are pretty much unplayable and you should ignore them no matter what. If heroes from this pool are your last pick of the pack, then you are definitely better off picking the basic heroes. The first red hero on our list is Axe. Axe has great stats and probably the best in the game. He will rarely spend time in the fountain, so you will have a much easier time securing the lane that he's on. His signature spell, Berserker's Call, allows him to battle his enemy neighbors in the action phase and essentially lets Axe attack twice in one round. This is quite powerful, because when you have initiative, your opponent cannot stop this attack from happening. This is why Axe belongs in the S tier. It doesn't even have a passive. What an OP card. Next up, we have Beastmaster. Beastmaster has pretty decent stats, but the 5 attack makes it a bit harder to kill other heroes. Its passive lets you summon a loyal beast every 3 rounds. The loyal beast is very strong, but the ability timer makes the passive weaker than others. The signature card is quite expensive and stuns a unit and moves its neighbors to different lanes. This effect can win you a lane or enable you to bounce back, but sometimes it can backfire and give your opponent advantage elsewhere. For these reasons, this card belongs in the B tier. Next, we have Bristleback. The stats are nuts. 8 attack kills a lot of things, and the passive to gain plus 2 armor when a hero blocking Bristleback dies allows Bristleback to survive for multiple rounds. His signature spell Vicious Nasal Goo isn't very strong, but minus 2 armor can be used to help you secure kills. Plus, the rest of Bristleback's kit more than makes up for it. This is why he belongs in the A tier. Centaur War Runner. For a red hero, this hero has quite a low attack. The passive gives a plus 2 retaliate which is nice, but the 4 base attack makes it so that the hero gets hard countered by armor. The signature card, Double Edge, is a good finisher, but beyond that, it's not very effective. In most situations, it's basically a dead card in your hand, and if you use it to kill another hero, your hero will die too in the process. This is why this hero belongs in the F tier. Keep the Bold, the basic hero, has slightly weaker stats than Axe, so it's pretty decent to start the game with. Also like Axe, he doesn't have a passive. His signature card makes you pay 5 mana to have the same stats as Axe, and that's it. Such an unexciting hero might find its place in some decks, but otherwise it is not that great. Therefore, this hero belongs in the C tier. Next on the list, we have Legion Commander. She has great stats like Keef, and her plus 2 retaliate makes her quite strong. However, her greatest strength lies in her signature card, Duel. The card lets a red hero battle any other unit in that lane for just 2 mana during the action phase. This is one of the strongest spells out there in draft. This makes Legion Commander an S tier hero. Never miss out on her. Mazzy has pretty low health. While the 3 armor is supposed to make up for it, piercing damage can make quick work of her. The signature card lets you give plus 1 armor to a tower in any lane, and this is where Mazzy shines. Stacking this improvement might stall a lane completely. Taking all of this into consideration, we put Mazzy in the B tier. Pugna has low health and no armor. The passive on this hero doesn't make up for those stats in any way. It condemns a random enemy improvement every third round. This effect might be very strong, but it is also very situational as well. If you really need this effect, then Smash Their Defenses does the job and draws you a card. So, just pick that instead. Pugna's signature card deals 3 damage to the enemy tower after your opponent plays a spell. This card is pretty bad considering your opponents can't play around it if they wanted to, but usually they wouldn't care about taking 3 damage, because Draft is more about board tempo than dealing direct tower damage. This is why Pugna belongs in the F tier. Sven has decent stats and a great passive ability. The Cleave allows it to damage or kill the melee creeps on the side while facing a large enemy in front of it. The signature card, although a bit expensive, synergizes with Sven very well. A general problem with red spells is that they're too reliant on red heroes, which is evident looking at Sven's signature card. Taking this into consideration, Sven belongs in the B tier. Tidehunter has terrible attack for a red hero. 
The passive ability is pretty strong since you can technically stun all enemies in a lane, but it's on a 4 round cooldown which is very slow. Stunning enemies also really won't matter too much when Tidehunter can't really kill its enemy with its low attack value. You will probably need a different hero to help you out in that lane. Tidehunter's signature card is very average, since it modifies a red hero with plus one armor and gives you initiative for one mana. While the initiative is great, the card in general doesn't achieve much. All of these reasons is why we put Tidehunter in the F tier. Timbersaw is also a red hero with low attack value, and it has a weak passive. It gains plus one armor for each attacker. Generally, it will have one armor, which is fine, but nothing to be scared of. His signature is pretty good. It deals two damage to the enemy neighbor and gives him minus two attack this round for only two mana. However, a signature card cannot make a hero card good on its own. For these reasons, Timbersaw belongs in the C tier. Finally on our red hero list, we have Ursa. Ursa has great stats and the decent passive of wounding his opponents with minus one armor. Fits well thematically for a bear, don't you think? His signature card in Rage gives a hero plus four attack and armor. This is quite weak unless you draft multiple red heroes. This is why Ursa belongs in the B tier. That's all for our Red Hero Draft tier list. Be sure to check out our other tier list videos for the rest of the colors. I hope you guys have a better experience drafting now that you have watched this video. If you ever need to reference back to the tier list for all the colors, we have compiled a full tier list on our website for your convenience. Link is in the description below. As always, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.